Hi, welcome to Bootstrap Algebra Lesson 9, Solving Word Problems. If you've had problems with word problems in the past, don't worry about the, the, the fact that we're using that term. Um, you're a computer programmer now and you have tools that you didn't have before um, to be able to attack these things that in school they call word problems. So don't worry about that. We will be able to get through it. Let's uh, go to make sure we're opening our supplemental resources. Let's look at what we did last time. Last time you learned a huge, huge part of Wii Scheme um, and computer programming, which is uh, defining functions on your own. Um, we extended the design recipe that we've been learning. We hadn't called it that before, but now we're going to call it the design recipe. Um, before you had just uh, contracts. Um, and, and now um, you have um, um, a new tool with the example um, to, to be able to do um, to show how your contract should work in real life and um, uh, be able to define that in a function so that you don't have to repeat yourself so that you can can think about these repeated uh, things as a new function that you define that may have a different domain than than the um, whatever function you use in the body and um, you got some practice doing those things, making your own functions. And now we're going to expand that out a little bit um, beyond, um, you know, just creating triangles and circles and stars. To do something that might be a little more useful, especially if you're a rocket scientist. So let's look at this guy. So. Let's jump right into Wii Scheme. Um, this is going to be something more and more that we'll do. Is hey, you're you're a programmer now, and uh, we want to we want to use our programming tools um, as ways to think through things. So, let's open up Wii Scheme. Uh, under the starter files, we have something called Rocket Height. Let's open that up. Let's take a, a brief look. We're going to look at this for the next few minutes. So um, let's let's just briefly see what's here. Ah, here is a contract we, we understand, and this looks like um, an entire design recipe with something a little different here. And then some comments with uh, maybe some instructions that we'll see. So we'll spend the next few minutes going over that. All right, we want to click Remix to save a copy for ourselves. Let's see. How about I go through and do it, and then I'll give you a chance on this screen uh, to uh, do that for yourself. So uh, first, I'm going to hit Remix. That means I now have a version of Rocket Height in my program. In fact, I, on this other tab, if I refresh that, I should have Rocket Height. All right. And I'm going to look back here. All right, let's let's try to try to make something happen um, and go through this. So the first thing we need to do is always uh, run. And if we remember before, that's going to load all the definitions, including the defines, and it's going to run any examples it founds, uh, finds. And, and you probably learned from uh, your experimentations, if you have an example that doesn't match the two parts, then you'll get an error. And in fact, we have an example here. We only have one. It's got two parts. It calls a function called rocket height with a parameter of zero or an argument of zero, and it expects to return a zero. Well, here is a definition with a domain of number and a range of number. And uh, so it's going to take a domain that it's going to call seconds, and it returns a zero. Well, obviously, that's why this example turned came back true because no matter what you put in here you get a zero in fact let's do one we put something other than zero so if i put in a hundred and then i run oh wait 
Oh, well, no, I, I put in zero to expect it. If I put in 100, what if I expect 100? I don't know what to expect, but uh, we'll, we have something other than zero. And sure enough, it fails because zero is all this thing knows how to bring back. So we'll take that out for now. Now, according to, I'm going to run it again just to get that new definition and or to get rid of that example. To um, It looks like they've given us some instructions here. Let's see what this does. I copy that, paste it over here. Start rocket height. Um, remember, we, we don't see these definitions in our uh, file because they've used this little bit of uh, syntax here to require some other file. So they the uh, the um, Bootstrap people gave us uh, this functions and something called a teach pack. And that we assume that's where all these things are defined. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, it made a new graphical program, new window, and uh, it says that we could uh, press the space bar to add a second to our rocket who looks like he's blasting off. I'm pressing space, and you can see the time is going up every time I press space. I'm pressing it, but it looks like and then we'll say I'm going to do B. It says B goes back. All right, so see my counter here. My time is going down, so I can go forward in time. I can go backward in time, but this little rocket's not moving. I'm going to close that. And we can guess why. It's because rocket height, whatever it does, we're supposed to do, then um, it always gives a zero, so it always stays on the ground. In fact, we have this new thing here called a purpose statement that says that the rocket height function should tell us how high is the rocket after a given number of seconds. But it looks like this is broken because it always says zero. No matter what the seconds is, it always says zero. So um, that is um, broken and we can figure out how we might fix that by giving something back other than zero, maybe even something that depends on seconds. Um, we'll do that uh, as we go forward. I want to show one thing. You see how even though this second is wrapped to the other line, it is still colored as a um, comment. So I'm going to slide this over, and it wraps. It's soft wraps. It wraps around. So if I if I put an enter here, well now that looks like code. And if I want to comment, I have to do semicolon. But if it's just a really long uh, string here, then if I move this and it's too short, it automatically wraps and uh, the, it, it, you can tell that it, it's just a soft wrap because it keeps uh, the color of the comment. So I just wanted to point that out. If you have a really long line, that's fine. Um, you can just go back and forth and if you do you know, want to clean it up and put an enter here, then make sure you put a comment so it doesn't think it's code. All right, let's go back. And we talked about what we thought it was supposed to do. We saw that thing called a purpose statement, which told us what it was supposed to do. The domain we saw of rocket height was the number of seconds. So it, it, it was a number. Uh, so the domain is a number, data type of number. The range, uh, what is rocket height supposed to give us back? Let's look at the purpose statement again. How high? Well, the height, um, which we can you know, based on the name of the function, how high the rocket is, um, is also going to be a number. I guess we could, we don't know if it's in feet or inches or pixels or, or what, but it's some kind of number. So the range is also a number. And we talked about how we might fix it by doing something other than zero. All right, let's look at page 27. Don't print it yet if you haven't, because um, you know, it, it's up to you, uh, you know, how you, um, when anybody teaches you anything, um, the tools that you use. And so, you know, we give um, different things to use. But I have to tell you, um, I'm tired of writing stuff in. Uh, now that we have the tools of we Scheme, I'm probably just going to always use um, my, my we Scheme editor to do these things. So um, I'll see what's what's here, but you know this just is a template for examples and the function input uh, for the um, the design recipe, 
and I can really quickly now, you know, I know enough about the design recipe to make my own little template um, if I wanted to here, or I can say name uh, domain range example, you know, example and definition, all those things that we, we do from the design recipe. I'm just going to start doing them here. If you're paper oriented or you really like to write, or if your um, uh, partner really wants you to, to be able to communicate better, definitely in my work as a programmer, we use paper all the time to communicate um, with other people. Um, but now it's up to you um, whether you want to do stuff on these, the, the papers, just stuff like this, or um, just, just do that in the, um, editor and I'm going to do it in the editor all right a rocket blasts off traveling second seven meters a second how high is the rocket after a given number of seconds so this is like a word problem like you might get at school um, one problem we have with teaching um, word problems is um, usually they're super boring and you have to use your imagination to figure out whether it's something you might be interested in but we as programmers have something super fun which is we can turn this word problem into something that's much more exciting if i do start rocket it's a rocket and i can solve this if, if i can, can crack this word problem i can make this rocket fly and that is so much more fun than just thinking about um, a dead set of words on the page so let's um now apply this rocket to our cartoon rocket that's on that page. A rocket blasts off, traveling at seven meters a second. So that's some kind of speed, right? Don't mind, I don't care too much about now what it is. How high is the rocket after a given number of seconds? Well, now we have this tool of the design recipe that we can let's let's just work through the design recipe. Um, we don't need to understand yet all this means what kind of equations we're going to use what kind of formulas we need first let's use the design recipe and see what we already can fill in so let's we'll start with the contract rocket height so we give it a name and already we've um, cracked a couple of things just by naming this function if, if i had a function that solved this problem what would it look like well it's going to how high is the rocket? So in figuring out the name, I already had to crack this a little bit and say, okay, my function that figures out how high is the rocket, I'm going to call rocket height. Cool. All right, the domain is part of the contract. All right, what goes into this function? So let's keep going, scanning through here. Rocket blasts off traveling at how high after a given number of seconds. So if I want to figure out what goes into this function? What do I need to know? I need to know how long it's been traveling, right? Because after zero seconds, it's zero off the ground. After some seconds, it's some off the ground, right? And that input is the number of seconds. So it's a number, right? Because we remember we're talk changing these details into uh, data types for our contract, all right? We know what the next thing is going to be. What's it going to ask us for? It's going to ask us for the range. All right, what comes out of this rocket height function? Well, our, our work we did in naming it is really going to give it away. Um, rocket height, well, it's the height, right? So it's the height off the ground. Um, they've used meters here, so we could. it may be in meters, depending on how we do it, but it's some kind of number, right? Because that's all we need to know right now to fill out the, to do the step of turning this problem into a contract that's all we need to figure out in this first pass is let's give it some kind of meaningful name if you can't think of a name sometimes naming stuff is hard just make up a name call it blue 32 or whatever just make up a goofy name and you could you may come back later and as you understand the problem better have a better sense of that and all we're really trying to figure out from this problem is what kinds of things go in and what kinds of things come out what data types go in what data types go out all right now there is something new we have from this which is a purpose statement on short word problems it's going to really just be maybe a rephrasing of the um, 
word problem. Um, you know, sometimes this is really challenging too. I might get word problems at work, which, you know, that's the other exciting thing. One that's the exciting thing about, about using computers to solve problems is people have really complicated problems. Sometimes it takes them, you know, meetings, and hours and hours and hours to understand it. And they'll do videos and they'll take me on a tour of a factory or a restaurant to, to, to explain their problem t to me. And I need to um, boil that down into a bunch of functions. And each of those functions has to have a specific purpose. Um, but this one's going to map pretty clearly. All right. What does the purpose of this rocket height function? Well, it consumes the number of seconds. You may not use the word consume. You may say takes in or you know whatever verb you want to use here. But consumes. It eats the number of seconds and multiplies by seven to produce the height. Do we know that yet? We know it produces the height. Multiplies by seven. So this is where you can bring in a little bit of algebra or physics knowledge if you have it, or you can look it up or ask somebody. Traveling at seven meters per second. So when you have a ratio like this, we just think through it. At zero seconds, how high is it gonna be? Well, it's gonna be zero. So that's a super easy one. After one se so we, we use, let's use some simple numbers. After one second, how high is it going to be? Well, we know that meters per second, so that per means for every one second, it goes seven. Right? So after one second, it's seven. Okay, that tells me something. How about after two seconds? Well, it went seven and then seven, that's 14. So yeah, now I can see how they got this because we multiply, we can multiply two times seven, three times seven, four times seven to get the height, which now we're going to say is in meters after a certain number of seconds. So multiply is by seven to produce the height. That makes sense. So that's our purpose statement. And we can write that using we scheme comments. Now, we already know this part. Examples. And that's how I thought through it. And sometimes I may not be able to put all these details in the purpose statement until I do some examples. And you saw me just think through some examples, but really I use um, the computer all the time to work through examples, to um, take them out of my imagination into something a little more real. And we'll practice that in a minute. All right. So the rocket height of zero is zero. And we multiplied by seven the number of seconds, right? Because this kind of we, we, we came up with. But this is something we could experiment with. Um, let's uh, keep going. Here's another example they gave after 265. It's going to give 265. All right. And see how the number of seconds. Here's the seconds that are going into this function. Here's the number that's the domain. It's the seconds. We tied those together in our brain. And this is how we tied them together in the examples and in the body of the function. Well, and we can call them, we can call them seconds. They called it sec. You'll see that a lot of times in computer programs. We don't like to type things out, so we'll just abbreviate with our own abbreviation. Hopefully that makes sense to other people. This one makes sense to me that we're going to use the abbreviation sec to mean seconds. Now we have everything we need to define. We have a little define template, which, like I said, I a lot of times will just copy an example, take out the word example, put in define, take uh, the the numbers that we're using here, the, the actual numbers, and put in the variable name. I bet that's going to be next. Yep. So we took out the number here, put in sec. That's what we're going to pass in. All right. Now... Let's make this rocket fly. I'm going to do this. Um, let's see, did I give you a chance to uh, do yours yet? So let's see. I will give you just a couple of seconds. If you have not um, remixed your rocket height file, do that. So um, on your Wii scheme, starter files, hit rocket height. You'll get a new rocket height. Hit remix so that you have, which I don't have because I've already saved it, um, so hit remix and you have your own version. So just take uh, 20 seconds, pause, and do that. So go ahead, pause. Okay, now you have your own example of rocket height. So let's make this work now that we 
fix the code to make the rocket fly. All right. Um, well, and we see now from this example of why, uh, you know, it sits on the ground because that's all this rocket knows how to do is sit on the ground. Um, but now let's put in some more, another example. And one of the ones I thought through as I was looking at the problem example. Oh. All right. And I backspace over that. So I don't have it right, but you know, it, it, You've seen this editor as I go left and right. It tries to match up the parentheses. So if they're not where you think they should be, then that's okay. Uh, or you can fix it. So now rocket height. Um, and I did one, right? Because thinking through the problem, okay, how f after one second, it should be seven, right? And I'm going to copy this one. And I also, as I was thinking through it, said after two seconds it should be 14 14 and after what did they do 265 now you may be tempted to go get a calculator and say what 265 times 7 is but don't you're a programmer use the make the computer do it you can say times 265 7 because now so we, what did we do when we did this? We did this in our head, right? 7 is really 7 times 1. 14 is really 7 times 2. In fact, we could replace this with times uh, 7, 2. In fact, let's move this around so they're in the right or in a different order. That's going to make it easier to, for us to figure out what we're doing here. Um, so I want to show you one thing, which is, if you remember we had to define a function we have define and then we have in parentheses kind of how we're going to do the example right so rocket height with seconds matches up with how we're going to call the example but sometimes we're going to have more complicated bodies so instead of just having it you know last last session we just defined everything on in line like that well if you press enter here it's before the last closing so it doesn't jump all the way back we're still in the body and in fact, I can give myself more space in the body, and it's going to automatically um, indent for us so that I can put different body lines. I can have many different body lines inside the body. And in fact, I could even define a constant here. But all right, let's get back to the problem. We really want to do something other than this zero. And if I copied this, as the body all right and we can see if I go all the way to the outside of the function it, it highlights this guy to make sure that we know that this outside works so if somehow you get it like that and the outside you know you're at your end of your function and it's not matching up with the front you may need an extra paren if you have too many it turns it red Okay, now we know we don't want all, our rocket to always be super blasted off like this is, and we want to take in seconds, and we, all right, two, this was two seconds, this is 265 seconds, so we know we can turn this into seconds. Ah, and in fact, in here, we use the term seconds instead of sex, so we can do seconds here and seconds here. All right, that, and so, oh, that says both inside the body. All right, we think that might be a good function. Um, before, they only had one example, and that's why it looked like that worked fine, but it didn't. So let's run this. And we got nothing back. That means all of our examples passed. It's a good test. Let's now see what happens. We start rocket. Start rocket. Here's our rocket. I'm going to press the space bar because that's what it says to do right down here. Space, space. Oh, look at that guy. He's flying. They tricked us by having uh, some smoke at the bottom. And now I'm going to do B to make it go backwards. You'll see the time here in seconds. 
look, it says the height in meters. I'm going to go backwards. Let's go back to our number uh, two. Time in is number two, and it is 14 meters. I'm going to go backwards one more. Height is seven, one meter. Backwards. Well, let me go negative. Yep. Let's me go negative. So I go into the ground. I'm going to space up until we get to one again. Now, interesting. If you notice what they did, this image actually has smoke at the bottom of it. But it's cut off from the bottom of what we see, so we don't see it. So it looks like it's really cool when I hit space, 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 space. Then now I now that I get to six seconds, which is 42 meters, because that's six times seven. Now I have sp smoke coming out the bottom because it's doing that. And I'm just going to hold space down. Let's see what happens when he gets to the top. He just flies off our screen. I can do B, and I can do space, and move him around. Okay, so that is the answer to our word problem. So hopefully that makes sense. We just did one thing at a time, working through our design recipe to uh, just try to figure out what they were asking us. The contract helped us with that. We got to do some examples. We did these in our brain of you know how far how will we how would we be after one second how high would we be after two seconds some of them that are that are more complicated i write them over here and i just work out the math and figure out if i really wanted to know how high uh, 265 seconds is it's 1855 meters so almost two kilometers so that's really far all right what was the problem? We talked about that. What mistake did the programmer make? We talked about that. At what step in the design recipe, this is a good thing to look at, the first mistake. Well, in the contract, there was nothing wrong with this contract. The problem was, in the examples, we had one example that was 0, 0. That was correct. And then the next example, if the programmer had done one more example, it would have failed um, with the old version of... Uh, rocket height um, because after one second it you remember it used to say always zero and that would have failed all right let's look at some of these other things um, we all saw we saw start rocket height what do we think graph rocket height is going to do let's see all right this looks like it could be a graph that has seconds and meters over here uh, space bar. I'm going to I'm going to add seconds. So I've hit it three times. Ah, and he, oh, I've hit it four times. And here, after four, it says 28. So it looks like every time I space, it's making a point on this graph of uh, the function going in is our our rocket height function. I get a four in. I get a 28 out. So it's just like functions we do in algebra, um, except they're using little pictures of rockets, it looks like. I'm going to hit space a bunch of times. And as we see, it lines up, and it keeps changing the scale here. This gets more filled in with little rockets, so it's going to look more and more like a line. Right? I'm going to quit that. Let's see what space rocket height does. It's got a bunch of stuff. Uh, remember, though, now that you understand stuff, they just change the background. Ah, and this is this is uh, telling us different things like um, the relationship between where our rocket is, which I'm going to space it up a little bit. All right, our rocket is all right after 25 seconds. It's higher than kites. Let's go up to helicopters. I'm space, 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 space. After 200 seconds, we're almost to where helicopters fly. You can do this and see. I'm going to go back down. We can see all kinds of other stuff. So that is super fun. And from a programming perspective, they changed the background. Looks like they they made it go a little slower than it was before, so that we could get you know super high. So they must have changed some other stuff in rocket height, but uh, or or uh, changed the the environment around rocket height to see everything. All right, I don't have a super wide monitor. I'm not sure what we'll see here. 
on Backspace. I've got a oh, paren. Oh, all right. This is everything at the same time. So if you have a monitor that shows this, um, I'm scroll. I could scroll over maybe. Nope. All right. So, so you really do need a wide monitor. But when I hit space, it's our original picture. It's our space. And over here is going to be uh, that's off the screen is going to be our graph. That's super fun. So play with that. Experiment with that. And in fact, that is your only homework for this uh, session is to just do some more stuff. You already have a rocket height file. So think about what could you do to make the rocket faster or slower? Can you make it accelerate? Um, we didn't talk, um, we meant to talk about, um, I'm going to run and hit alt up arrow at graph and I'm going to space a bunch of times. And we see, oops, grab this guy, move him over. We see that it looks more and more like a line. And if you remember, functions that produce a line as output are called linear functions. We can tell that it's going to be a linear function because in our, in our um, body definition, we take in seconds, we multiply by a constant 7. And so that's what a linear function looks like. If you remember in algebra, we might say y equals uh, 7 times x. All right? That's the same thing as this we scheme version of a function. Right? Uh, I can't run the body outside of a function body, but the 7 times x is going to be a variable, right? So it's linear. You could also make it do something else with it. If we put another x in there, then it becomes um, a different kind of function, not linear. So linear is a variable multiplied by a constant, right? So that's why the graph looks like a line. But if we want to make it accelerate, get faster, so it changes the speed, the rate at which the speed uh, changes depends on the seconds, right? So that's what we feel like if we we know is acceleration in the car when we push the accelerator down. The longer we go, the faster and faster and faster and faster we uh, accelerate. All right, so can you make it blast off and then land? So that's one thing to, to think about. Um, after a, well, we we'll think about well, let's think just 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 briefly about what that would mean. After a certain amount of time, it needs to go into negative seconds. Can you make it blast off, reach a peak of in the hundreds, and then land? All right. So here's some more interesting examples. I'm going to fly all these guys in and then go back. Um, so for next time, pick two or three of these with your partner. Tell your partner which ones you're picking um, so that then you can work through the design recipe and you will have a good example of the design recipe in your uh, rocket height file. To remember, you have the contract, you have a purpose statement, you have examples. So as you change these things, Make a copy of all of that stuff and start making changes. Rocket, uh, slow down. All right, and I'm going to say, okay, it's going to take a number in, but it, uh, how about speed up? That would be more fun. Going to take a number in. It's going to give a, a, a second. It's going to give a height out. But I need to change the, the purpose statement because I want, as the speed goes up, I want, it to excel, I want it to get faster and faster and faster. What does that do to my examples? Um, after one is seven, but after two, it's going to be, we want it to be something else, faster than seven. So it's not going to be a constant seven in here. Maybe it's going to be a function that takes the speed and does something with it. Can we make our rocket faster? But instead of doing 7, maybe we could do 10. Maybe we could do 50. All right. So um, take a few minutes. Look at this screen. 
talk with your partner about, and I'll leave, I'll leave this one up as the last screen of the, the video. Talk with your partner about uh, picking two or three of these uh, that you want to make your own version of Rocket Height with a new name, a new, uh, maybe a new contract, probably not a new contract, but a new purpose statement that does one of these other fun things with the rocket. And then um, you can make your own function that makes it fly. Um, and let's see, let's go back. I just want to make sure to remember, to remember how we start it. So if I have a new function, um, and all right, I am going to make a speed up. I'm going to take out these for a second. But uh, let's call it, let's just call it Rocket Faster. It's actually going to have the same purpose. It's just after one second, I want it to go... Uh, 50. So it's going to jump really fast. And I'm going to do this rocket uh, faster. Copy. Paste. 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 Oops. Paste. And 50. Right? So it's just like rocket height, except it's faster. And I got to remember to do start. Uh, let's see. I got, need to save run didn't get any problems with with this um, but if I want to see it work I need to do start rocket faster enter all right now we think it's going to jump really fast and it does see how that's jumping more okay so I just wanted to show that to remind you how to um, get your new function to run when you define a new function um, and you can find many, many functions in here, and you can only run one at a time with the start program, but you can, you know, uh, kill that, and then um, you don't even have to, to resave it. If you've already had these in here, you don't have to rerun it. You can just hit start in the name of your function. All right, so that's it. Um, do a few of these for next time. Hopefully um, that is a, a, a much more fun way to, to do um, uh, what we usually call word problems because um, we can make them into really super fun simulations because uh, you're a programmer now.